In this video we are going to use two pieces of 74HC595 shift register chip to build two to eight digits seven segment display. We are going to display integer up to eight digits. Also we will be able to display decimal values such as this. We are going to learn how to measure the voltage of potentiometer and display it on the display. All the wiring diagram is shown and explained. Code is provided via the resources page and explained line by line. Transistor driver for higher current or larger LED displays also explained and shown. And I'm going to explain how this project works so you can customize it. If you don't want to learn, then the link to resources page where you can view the wiring diagram and grab the code is below this video. Otherwise, stay with me. Before I start, please subscribe to my channel so you are informed when I post a new video. Let's get started with this. First code to demonstrate using the 74HT595 is to use LED and I've used this circuit here except I've changed the pins and the wiring is exactly the same as in here. The output from uh, Q00 to Q7, from here Q0 to Q7 are connected each to an uh, LED and I use 330 ohm resistor because of this 5 volts and exactly the wiring is like this, I've connected it like that. Only three wire goes from Arduino and then these two wires are uh, for the positive and ground and from this red I've taken one red to the other side so we have 5 volts on that side and from ground which is blue line also I've taken another wire so the same with both sides we have 5 volts on ground and the rest is the wiring in here. And here is the code we have defined this pin 10, 11, 12, pin 14, pin 12, pin 11 of the chip. These are the chip pin, these are the names. I've been connected to 10, 11, and 12. These are the values to turn on each segment, each LED. And as you can see, this is one LED, and then one and two, and then one, two, and three, and then four, five, six, and seven. Each one means one LED is on, and then the eight, all of them will be on. So this is our data array and we are defining the pens as an output and then inside the loop we just run this to set the pen 12, the latch pen to low and then we use shift out, we put the data pen, uh, we use that, we pass data pen, clock pen and then we use most significant bit, significant bit first and we pass the data based on this num, num is 0, 1, 2, 3, uh, this loop goes num is 0, 2, 3, up to equal 8. So every time it changes, num changes 0, 1, 2, 3, up 8, and it comes to this array and it goes and pulls up the data. So this is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, up to 8. It starts 0 from here up to 7. And every time it passes the, those bits to this shift out, and then we set this to low uh, half a second and the loop will continue like that uh, to shift out the data. And here is a demonstration, even though you saw it, so I'm just explaining that it starts at 0, 1, 2, 3 and it's keeping them on up to 8 and it comes back again. So everything will go off and then 1, 2, 3, up to 8. And the delay time is coming from here after this pen. If you want to speed it up, let's say make it 50. Let's upload the code. And as you can see now, it goes very fast. And for this second project, the wiring is exactly the same. I've connected now this seven segment display 
such that pen A, B, C, D are in order and the last pen is decimal point and the common is connected here via this 330 ohm resistor even though this is not a proper way each uh, uh, segment should each segment should have a resistor but for this demonstration and simplicity I'm just using one resistor and here if I and here I've connected the seven segment display with the same points with the same pins as you can see now the first one is A and then we have B C then D E F G and then decimal point exactly the same as those because they is connected to the same pins now I have speed it up so you can see all the segments are turned on so this way you better understand how seven segment display works and here this is how we turn on a seven segment display the seven segment display is arranged in terms of segments a b c d e f g and this is decimal point and when we connect it to this 74hc595 from q0 a b c d and i've arranged it such that you can see it easily up to seven this is a dp or decimal point because this is the eight point we start with zero up to seven that's eight the seven segment display is divided into seven segments and it starts with a b c clockwise you rotate a b c d e f and then g and then decimal point so these are seven pieces and the dp that's eight and for this chip there is a notch here uh, piece so from this point that you see there is a deep spot pen one starts and then pen eight and then nine to sixteen so q zero is one and then q1 up to q7 these are eight pens in total so a b c d e f g and then dp we are going to connect it like this i'm going to show you if we do not connect it we are going to put transistor one piece we have like this leds and this is arranged in common cathode so the line the side that we have the line it's cathode and then anode so these pins are anode we have to connect positive there and the uh, common will be ground and each element will be turned on and we will read digits and here to connect resistors we will use the pins you can stop this and follow the wiring between each pins and each segment for this particular display these are the segments a b c and d and decimal point and we have here 330 ohm resistors in between so the pin is not connected directly to the display but on the path there is a resistor for example if you follow this pin one it comes here and it goes to this line which is connected to this resistor and this line is all connected and then pink goes to the first pin to the right side and most of this display needs uh, between 5 to 10 milliampere uh, so the output from the chip will supply 10 milliampere and total will be 7 or 8 when the all digits are on so 80 milliampere will be drawn from the chip and uh, if you think that this chip get overloaded then you can use a transistor driver you can use a transistor driver like this this is a common uh, cathode the cathode is common connected so you can connect a transistor such that each input will come through a 1 kilo ohm or 10 kilo ohm resistor this doesn't matter because we are using transistor as a switch it will be saturated and it goes to the base this is a pnp transistor or transistor that the emitter is connected to the positive one example would be 
2N2907, and you can also use 2N3906 or any other PNP as long so that uh, this signal, for example, when it comes for a segment A, this will come to the base, uh, the zero will turn this on. So then the signal will pass and drive the, that segment, that particular segment. And the same way for each segment, we need to have a mm, transistor in order to drive it. And there is a lazy way to do it, which uh, we can put one resistor for all segments. This, why I call it lazy? Because the amount of light will be inconsistent. And this resistor, for example, have a act as this resistor acts as a voltage divider, and for each segment, when the signal comes, it passes through the, the segment and comes. There is a voltage drop. For example, if this draws 10 milliampere, the voltage will be calculated by Ohm's law lower. But when, for example, when we display two, you will see that we have one, two, three, four, five. Five segments will be turned on, and there will be 50 milliampere will pass through this resistor, and as a result, there will be huge voltage drop, and this will look dimmer. So, depending on what digit is displayed, the amount of light will not be consistent. It will be either darker or dimmer. For example, if you display one, two display will be two segments will be turned on, and it will be very bright. And if you display eight, which all of them will be turned on, it will be very dim. But it works, uh, you can test it for test purpose, but for real project, this is not the right way. And if you don't want to use a seven segment display, maybe larger LEDs, this is how you do it, one by one, all common. And if you're using common anode, in this case, anode is connected to the positive, and then the cathode will be connected. In this case, we are using NPN transistor and uh, for example you could use 2N2222 transistor you can pause the video if you want to follow it but this is proper way here it shows from 0 to 9 and for each segment this is not human readable so unless you have some kind of table you will not be able to understand let me increase the time so I can explain it, 5,000 uh, milliseconds. So zero is everything on except the middle one. And then one is two segment, these two. And then the two is like that, only G and B is off. Three, like this, so you can see it better. Four, these two and these two. So one, these two and these two after each other. Five, as you can see, is like this. Six, only one is off, which is this one and decimal point. Seven, A, B, C, D, you see, three of those. Now the wiring is the same, now the wiring is exactly the same as previous project, and I've connected this seven segment display, and we are displaying the numbers. And here is the code. The only portion that I've changed is this portion where the segments or LEDs were turning on before. Now these are based on the position of each uh, LED, which reflects uh, turning on a digit. For example, for zero, all of this should be on, and only the eighth one, the seventh, would be off. And for one, we have only two segments, and for two, three, and so forth. So this will create the digit, for example, for eight, all the seven segments are on here. And now if I, if you want to slow it down, just change this, let's say for two seconds and upload the code and let's see it. Now, once the code is uploaded, now and then click on this button to upload the code. Now once the code is uploaded, you will see the zero, one, these two, and two, three, four, and this is five, six, 
For 7, as you can see, A, B, C, D, A, B, C is on. And for 8, all of these are on, and that will create actual digits by turning on different segments. And here I've connected two display to the same pins, but the common has not been connected to different driver. As a result, you will see the same number on both displays. If you need to use two or more, up to eight digits, then we need one extra chip of 74HC595, the same chip. And here, this SHCP pin is connected to SHCP. And then STCP pin is connected to STCP. They are together. And then SHCP will be connected to pin 12 and STCP is connected to pin 11 and this pin now ds is connected to pin 10 uh, pay attention that ds pin we are getting this as a complement of q7 it's coming to this ds pin i put a red color so you can notice it and this goes to the display any display that you have you will have common now the common will be connected to these pens the same way this was a or the first one and then second third fourth the same way we start with first second third and fourth for example if you have this type of display you can do the same way now when we connect two chips here is a wiring diagram that i just shown you as you can see pen 8 9 10 from pen 10 goes to pen 10 and pen 11 goes to pen 11 and then Pen 8 goes to pen 14. And the Arduino side is not changing. And for the common, we are getting, this is for the first digit, common goes to the first one, and then go this line goes to the second one. And the same way now there is a shortcut to use one resistor on the path of the common. You see this line, that first digit is coming here and passes through 130 ohm resistor. Again, this is not a right way to do it, but this is a quick and lazy way, but it will work with inconsistent brightness of light. And the same is for the other one also, we put one resistor, but this is a proper way. Now, when you add more display in here, you just add second display and uh, the rest is not changing except the display driver. Let me show you here the wiring. So don't worry about four or five, just pay attention to the second one. So one was there already. We added second one and from the left, which was a green wire, I put one green wire to the left of the second one and then there was a yellow. So there was green for the first uh, pen, it goes to the first pen of the second, and yellow was to the second, it goes to the second of the other display. The middle one is not connected, don't worry, this is for the driver, I'm going to explain it. Orange is connected, which is from the fourth pen to the fourth pen, and from the fifth is purple. The same way at the bottom, you see from first to the first, second to the second, fourth to the fourth, fifth to the fifth. The middle is not connected because the, it's common for this display. And the same way you can add more display up to eight. So it will be a little messy if you're using single digit display, but it will work. Now, once that is done, then each display needs to be connected to the second chip. For example, as I mentioned, this pen 15 is A or uh, Q0 and then it goes Q1, 2, 3 up to 7 so up to 8 digits will be connected in here the first one is this it's coming to the common of the first digit and then the second one this is Q1 that was Q0, Q1 Q1 is coming through this green wire you see here and it's coming to the second one and then Q2, Q3 are the same way connected uh, this brown and red as you can see brown is connected to the third one and red is connected to the fourth one and you can have four more digits if you want up to eight digits it can be connected the same way this is the wiring for two seven segment display as you can see the left pen of this one is connected to the left pen 
and the second pen is connected to the second pen and the same way from the right first pen is connected to the first one and the right second pen is connected to the second one using orange all of the pens are exactly the same except the common pen so you will use the common pen this is for digit one the middle pen is common it goes through 330 ohm resistor and it comes to Q0 and then the second digit is Q1 and then if there is third fourth it will go like that like this so the second chip is used so here this one also goes through 330 ohm to the common as I mentioned this is a lazy design you are supposed to have resistor for each now if you need to use seven segment uh, display four pieces all together then the wiring will be very clean and here you can just follow this but this particular display has been arranged in this way and these are the pens exact pens common a b c d it has all these pens and it has been arranged so you can stop and watch it i will provide you the model for this display in the description the model for this display that i'm using is hs 420561k c30 now this was for the single digit if you connect multiple digits and you want to drive it with a transistor here is how it works i give you example of two digits and this this portion for single digit was exactly the same each transistor is connected to one segment and instead of being connected to the ground we will connect it using a transistor here uh, as i shown you uh, pen 10 is connected to pen 10 and as you can see pen 12 is connected here to pen 12 in this portion and so uh, and then pen 14 is connected for the first chip the second chip is not connected as i shown you in the diagram it comes from the q7 which is pen 9 it comes to pen 14 so after the value reaches to the maximum value or q7 this will shift the value and send a signal to this so that will be the first digit or first signal or first number that is shifted so then the rest is exactly the same and we do and then instead of connecting q0 to first segment second third we are using it to connect it to the transistor for and q1 so q1 is coming to the base of this transistor which is off and as soon as it receives a signal it will connect the common of this transistor to the ground this is a ground wire this is ground so the emitter is connected to the ground and the collector is connected to the seven segment display and the same way we have the second one now what happens with that display we will connect all the wires for example if this was b b was connected to the transistor bring a, another wire to this um, part b and then the c and e and f and the same way a b all of them just connect a wire which means they are connected in parallel and for the seg for the seven segment just connect them in parallel for example the first segment which is connected to the transistor here just connect it to the first segment and second segment to the second third to the third so they are all in parallel and here you see the first on the right side is connected to the first on the right and so forth so each segment a b c d will be connected all in parallel because we have eight transistor for the eight segment why we have eight as i mentioned multiple times we have seven segment plus decimal point and the transistor that you can use for the positive or the for the top one with a resistor this is a pnp 2N2907 or you, the, the one that I use is 2N3906 but for the bottom you can use this is P uh, this is NPN or negative transistor uh, this is 2N2222 and here is the code to display two digits I've added this variable called digits and then put two uh, for this case it must be two this portion is exactly the same we have this this variable that is holding for different digits and this portion is exactly the same 
And here inside the loop, for example, if we want to display two digits such as 18, we have defined a variable called number of type long, and we store this 18 into this number. First, we have to split and uh, separate this 1 and 8. We have to get them. And this is uh, an operator called modulo or modulus. I have a separate video explain this fully with multiple examples. So this, what it does is it gets the 18 and divides it by 10 as a whole number as a result because this is long. It discards all the decimal value and it uh, refers to the whole number. When, so when you divide 18 by 10, the, and the result will be division of 1. The answer is 1 and the remainder is 8. So this operation will get you 8 and it will be stored in a variable called digit 2. Then we have to get 1. This line gets the number divided by 10. 18 divided by 10 is 1. 8 is automatically discarded or the remainder is discarded and 1 modulus 10 if you divide 1 by 10 and get the remainder you will get 1 because it uh, it's not uh, divis divisible uh, as a whole number so we got 1 here and then 2 this line determines which display is on because we are using common cathode this first uh, this is referring to the first display, the second, third, fourth, up to eight display. So this is turning on the first display and keeping off all the other displays. This zero means on and is stored in here. And this line is turning that display, particular display in second uh, chip. And this goes, displays the value. And, for, and now digit one, so we get this digit 1, digit 1 is 1, and 1 comes here in this array and gets element first of this array. Let's go and see this array. So if you want to get 1, you get this value. As you can see, 0, 1, 1, 0. So this is elements of each uh, seven segment display, and that B and C is on, so we see the digit 1. And here. So this is our seven segment display, A, B, C, D, clockwise. To display one, this digit B and C must be on so we can see one. And the value is here and displayed, pushed as most significant bit. This is also most significant bit because we are uh, dealing with the right side is our value, not in this side. If, if this was our reference, we will use least significant bit. And then the last pin, which was low, it becomes high. And this was for training and uh, teaching. I put 1000, but this is supposed to be one millisecond. So now one is displayed. After that, we go to the next one. And then first digit is off. Second digit is now on. If you pay attention here, this was first digit. Now second digit is on. On means zero and the rest everything will be off, so the first digit will be off, second digit will be on, and that value will be passed. The value that we put here, 8, uh, this value will, so that digit, so digit 2 is now on, so when the, that segment is on, then we pass digit 2 here, it goes to 2 and gets element for the value for segments of 8, and uh, this is turning on the second one. So you can do the same thing. But, uh, so you can do this like copy and paste it multiple times and change the values, but that will not be the right way. But it will work. Um, but you have to also take care of the number. For number of digits, you have to do multiple of these lines, which I'm going to show in the next code, which can be done automatically with uh, only this portion of the code, and it can be used for multiple digits. So this was the, the explanation of the whole code. So one is for one display, the second one is for the second display, and here the display is uh, showing 18, 1, 8, and as you can see we are showing displaying 1 and then 8 alternately. So because I've set the speed so slow, you can see that uh, it's displaying 18. Now the delay is very, it's one second. Now, if I change it in this code, if I just make it one, uh, 
here I set for both digits one and let me click to upload the code let's see as and here it's turning on and off very quick and we don't see any blink or anything and the two LEDs are also showing these are exactly the common point for two digits let's make them 500 so one of them 500 and the second one quick let's see what do we see so we don't see anything because one is 500 times longer now 500 and 500 so it will alternate and it will be like this our number is now 18 you can do 35 for example let's upload it and now it's And here is the circuit uh, with five digits, so you can put up to eight. It did not fit, so I, I went up to here. And the wiring is such that all the segments have been connected to one digit, and then it, have been, it has been connected to the next one. So the left pin is connected to the next one, like that. If I remove it, it is like this. So they're just in parallel the left pin of this is connected to the left pin of the second to the third to the fourth and so forth now when you add more display in here you just add second display and uh, the rest is not changing except the display driver let me show you here the wiring so don't worry about four or five just pay attention to the second one so one was there already we added second one and from the left which was a green wire i put one green wire to the left of the second one and then there was a yellow so there was green for the first uh, pen it goes to the first pen of the second and yellow was to the second it goes to the second of the other display the middle one is not connected don't worry this is for the driver i'm going to explain it orange is connected which is from the fourth pen to the fourth pen and from the fifth is purple the same way at the bottom you see from first to the first second to the second fourth to the fourth fifth to the fifth the middle is not connected because the, it's common for this display and the same way you can add more display up to eight so it will be a little messy if you're using single digit display but it will work now once that is done then each display needs to be connected to the second chip. For example, as I mentioned, this pin 15 is A or uh, Q0, and then it goes Q1, 2, 3, up to 7. So up to 8 digits will be connected in here. The first one is this. It's coming to the common of the first digit. And then the second one, this is Q1. That was Q0, Q1. Q1 is coming through this green wire. You see here. And it's coming to the second one and then q2 q3 or the same way connected uh, this brown and red as you can see brown is connected to the third one and red is connected to the fourth one and you can have four more digits if you want up to eight digits it can be connected the same way i have five digits here all of them connected and we can set in our code i want to make sure that wiring is not ripped and then each digit has common and the common have been connected to pin uh, q0 
Q1, 2, 3, and 4, each with a resistor. This is a lazy connection. Uh, I put resistor in the common. I could put the resistor in here, but for simplicity, I put it like that. And here, this is the other one that uh, is exactly the same, except this time I have this one piece. All the wiring is done inside it. So we have A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and then common and decimal point uh, pens. Here is the model if you need it. And here is again, I'm repeating it, so you understand it better. We use here two chips and all these segments A, B, C, D up to decimal point are connected directly to the, uh, each segment and then from here Q0, this goes to digit 1 to the common, this goes to digit 2, the, uh, Q1, Q2, Q3, to D2, D3, D4 respectively. doesn't matter if you have uh, this type of seven segment display or each digit is separate. And now here is the code. Uh, this portion is exactly the same. These are the important elements that you should remember. If you have number of digits, now we add digits here. For example, if you have five digits, just put five. This is very important if you are displaying a decimal value or floating uh, number value. This, has, this must be defined either one, two, three, four, five, whatever you have number of decimal points. And show zeros is disabling the leading zero. If you want to set show zero to false, it will not display it. If you set it to true, all lowercase, T-R-U-E, like that, it will display the zeros. I've changed this portion now for common cathode, just put C cathode and A for anode inside single code. And these are variables that are used inside the uh, code. This uh, array is holding the digits that is being displayed. So whatever number you send, it will be displayed. This is holding the digits length, either if, if the value that you're sending is one, even though you have five digits, but you want to display, for example, one or five, for example, one digit. So this is holding that. This is used inside the code. Uh, time to remember the uh, decimal position. Do not change them. Debug. This is used internally. Is floating number. So this is also used internally to uh, mark a value as a decimal. And debug. Uh, delay. This is, you can set it. Uh, to learn or maybe debug uh, if you want to display something every second or something, but it should be zero for normal operation. As I change the loop value, for example, if you want to display every digit at one second, then put 1000 and you will see in four digits, one digit will be displayed one by one, which I'm going to demonstrate. It. This has not changed. Uh, this portion is holding the value. Do not change these. These are the prototypes for the two functions and that are at the bottom of the code. Inside the setup, nothing has changed. And here we put the debug. If you put the value, for example, anything other than zero, the debug will be set to true. Otherwise, it will be false inside the loop. This is how you display. This line it says show number and put your number. For example, 84933, 84, for three seconds. You must put some kind of uh, number here so we can display it properly. If you want it very fast, put 50, for example. That's fine. Um, so you can put some timing here. And then this is showing 72. This is showing decimal. If you want to show the one, a floating point value, show number decimal. This, have, this is a function at the bottom of the code, and it will display 1.654, for example. This decimal point, the decimal point that you put here, are directly related to this. If you put here 2, the rest will be this, uh, discarded. If you put here 4, and you put here 3, a 0 will be added. So that's normal in terms of math. 
This shows, for example, 205, and this shows, again, another floating point with 2. So remember, we have 3 plus 2, 5. So remember, we have to count this, otherwise you will get uh, incorrect uh, display value. This is just a loop. i is 0, and it increments as long as i is less than 131. So it will display from 0 to 130, and we use the same uh, function or method and we pass the i for 100 millisecond. So this is how we use it inside the loop. Now, the functions um, are doing a lot of work. When you say the uh, show number, the number is assigned as a long, and this is the time that you pass as a t of a time of long. So this remembers the current time. Millis, millis is a function that I've explained it. Check that video, the link would be below this video. And this is setting the, if the value is floating, if it sets it to false. And this is getting the length of this uh, number. For example, if you send 75, this goes to this function at the bottom of the code and extract uh, and gets the length and it stores it here, which is a global variable at the top of the code. And this is a k internally. And here we are setting, uh, extracting our digit from the number, for example. And here, this loop, the job of this loop was to do this one, but this uh, will not work because your digits will be maybe two digits, four digits, and so that's why I made this dynamic. I made this dynamic loop so it can accept any number uh, between zero to eight digits or whatever number of digits you have. So this has virtually no limit. Whatever you put the digit, it will work. But to understand it, it's, uh, let's say your number is 59847. This line is extracting the 7. When you do number, that number that comes, this number, modulus, modulus means divided by 10 and gives the remainder. If you divide this by 10 and see the remainder, the remainder would be 7. So you will get 7 and it will be stored in a fourth index 4 of this array. And then if you do it divided by 10, so this is divided by 1. This divided by 1, and this number is divided by 10, and then modulus, exact the same modulus. Because we are dividing it by 10, this goes next digit, and it picks up 4. And then we go by 100, so we get the 100th value, which is 8, and then the 1,000th value, which is 9, and the 10,000th value, which is 5, and we will store it in these index in this order. So I just put this here uh, for people who want to learn how this loop works, and do you do the math and see how it works. And this is a while loop that remembers the time, and it goes, uh, it's true as long as uh, uh, remember time is as long as this calculation is less than the, the, the amount of time that you set, and it runs this uh, function called shift digit. So this was done, and once it comes here, it goes to this shift digit. First, we set the bits for the display for digits. Initially, we set it like this, so the first digit would be on because it's. Uh, I'm using common anode, uh, common cathode, it should be off, that's why the first digit should be off, and then th this line is finding out the uh, leading zeros. This is for debug, if you set the, the, the number of seconds for debug, you will also see this text, the leading zeros and digits, so this is just for learning. So this loop doesn't do anything, it was just printing something. This line is taking care of each digit dynamically because we initially set it like that, but we see if, if it is first digit, we put the first one zero. If it is one, we set the second digit. That is referring to first, second, third, fourth. Each one is a digit here. So we are turning them off and the same way up to uh, fifth, because we start with zero, that's the fifth. And this line is checking if the 
value that we have has decimal point and if the type is decimal then we this line is setting using this uh, operator we set the seven digit which means the eight bit as one zero one two three four five six seven so we start with zero and end with seven so that's the eight bit and in terms of number that is uh, sixth so this is just setting it uh, to display the decimal point dynamically based on i which whatever digit it is and here this value this is just remember segment segment to display because of this uh, zeros and this line if it says it says if it is not like this you can turn off the zeros the leading zeros or display them for example for this these two as well shown zero then it will turn all the digits on uh, on that digit off otherwise it will set them back on and here this line is taking care of common cathode or common anode if you put a cc this line is just toggling this mark means toggle all the bits these bits if they are all zero it makes it one if they are one it makes them zero so it gets the segments display and stores it here by toggling them and if we have debug it will print all the debug information and this is the line where we used in previous codes to display so the value comes this turns on the appropriate digit this sends the segment value so i put proper naming when you look at them you know digit bits and seven segment to display segments to display and after that if the decimal point was uh, changed then we toggle it back so for the next digit it's displayed properly and if the debug is enabled then we add a delay so it will wait that amount amount of time for each digit now when we call show decimal again we need to extract the decimal from the value and uh, so i uh, so we pass the number and this will get the digit and extract uh, extract that this that decimal point position and the number of digits and store them in a global variable and then we go to shift uh, which will run now flow to integer when the number comes for example 2.8 or, or something we use this function which is from c++ it gets the value in here and we get we have to mention how many digit we expect so the digit plus one is because of the decimal point uh, so first we create this character as a buffer and then we pass the number the number of digit to expect the floating precision and the buffer that we want to store so this calculation or extraction will be stored in this uh, ar array of character type which is defined in here and in this line we are converting it to string because we will use string methods to extract values so this is debug and this line is extracting uh, this is getting the position of decimal so we check we go character at this position we check if it is equal zero then we set the character to i whatever is either zero one two three or whatever number and then we break from the loop and then we create this array and we uh, of characters from zero to nine to check each character in the array this line is from string number that we have we remove the decimal point from that string uh, so we have it without uh, remember it's a string so we remove the decimal point and then we remember the decimal position because we found the decimal position now we removed remove the decimal point so we are subtracting one so we know the decimal position is one less and digit length we set it to zero and then we check 
this is now getting each digit character at that string. So for length of the string, we go and we go from 0 to 9 or mm, because we expect a number between 0 to 9 and this loop is extracting it and it sets the digit length so this will continue extracting. Integer length is a function that we need to get it. Uh, uh, this, this is also a lazy way. This could have been done dynamically but th this can extract the length of digit from 0 to 9 and it will return and that's what, this was the full explanation of code. And here is a demonstration. The numbers that I've set here are at the top and they are being displayed here at the bottom. Now we are seeing decimal points and then the counter goes up to 130. and it goes back to this value. Let's make it three seconds. Upload it. Let's make this 50 and let's go to 10,031. I change this to 30 and then 10,031. This is now a 50 millisecond. Let's make it 10 times faster, 5 times faster, 10 milliseconds. It will be very quick, so we will not be able to even see these two digits, perhaps. Now 72, and then this, 205, and then 97, the decimal point, and here. This will take very long because even 10,000. Oh, yeah. So let me disconnect this. And connect this one. This will not display the decimal points. This is now four digits. I have to make changes in the code. Let's make it four. And the floating points are not shown on this display because it does not have it. Th these elements that you see, these are just fake empty dots. So now when we go four digits, you can see that this 8 is clamped from the left side, not from the right side. So we have to make sure that we do not pass any five digits. So let's see. Four thousand nine hundred thirty-three seventy-two, and this will not be displayed with the decimal points. You see, the decimal points are gone, and 
as you can see it, it is zero so this must be greater than 20 I and let's put it at five I removed one of the digits from this multi-digit and that's all one pack I've connected it in parallel all the data comes from that is connected to this chip the three wires from Arduino from that point is here and then power 5 volts and as you can see this doesn't show the decimal point this shows the decimal points but this has, be, has been biased properly with resistors so the intensity of light is consistent and this is a lazy design just one resistor for each segment perfect and let me change the anode and cathode type here let's say I did not have uh, the common anode but I'm putting a as common anode and see how it responds like this because the segments are incorrect and if you pay attention carefully uh, as you can see this is 5 4 and this is 7 and 2 the just read the off points We can read this. This is four, as you can see, and the number is very quick. Just pay attention here. This is three, and this is now seven and two. I don't know if you can read it. And now I'm simply adding this variable resistor, also called potentiometer. So the right pen. That's connected to 5 volts on the red line here. The left pen that's connected to the ground. Anywhere on this blue line, that's ground on, on this or on this side. The middle pen is connected to analog zero where we read the value of the potentiometer read the analog zero which is from zero to 1024 it will be stored in a variable called pot value and then we use a map to get the pot value which is from zero to 1024 and map it to a value between zero and two seconds so the maximum value when we rotate it will be two seconds if you want to change it just change this value reduce or increase it and the result of this calculation is in the delay value and here we say if the delay is above 20 because it will fluctuate so if it is 20 then we apply it with a 20 millisecond delay otherwise it will not be, have any effect so the only code that have been added are these lines and here to demonstrate it better I have set the timing of the delay of each digit using this potentiometer at the moment the delay is one a millisecond and as you can see because each digit is turned on and off uh, and very quickly you don't see it so let me increase the timing as soon as I increase the time as you can see eight flashes here and then four and so forth but if I slow it down I go to the right and the time is reduced as you can see so when 8 is displayed, the rest are off. 
Then 4 is the split, the rest is off, the same with 3 and 2. So each uh, is the split, each digit is the split, the rest is off. Originally, this is such that 8 is the split in everything, but we will turn that particular digit, the rest off, and this is on. Now, if I slow it down, you can see that better even. So 8 and the rest is off in the same way. I can increase it fully so you can see it better. Because the 4 is now goes to all other digits, we have to turn them off and uh, visually we don't see it. And because this is turning on and off very quickly, this goes very fast, we will see it like this. Now we are going to see connecting a potentiometer with the same circuit. It has three wires. The right wire is connected to 5 volts. The left is connected to the ground. And the middle pin is connected to analog zero here. The rest is exactly the same. And here inside the code the only changes that i made was inside the loop here we use using analog read analog zero pin the result which is from zero to 1023 is stored in a variable called sensor value and this line we get the sensor value multiplied by this fraction our arduino is five volts if yours is three volts 3.3 volts type here 3.3 volts and this is for 10 bits for uh, uh, 12 bits go with a higher value, 2 to the power, this is 2 to the power 10 minus 1. And your Arduino, if it is 12 bits, 2 to the power of 12 minus 1. If it is 16, 2 to the power 16 minus 1. And the result of this is a voltage which is stored in this variable. And we use this line, show number decimal, and we pass the voltage. This 50 means 50 millisecond, so give it a little time or maybe even less than 50, make it, but not less than 20. And it will be this rate. Uh, and here, again, I can change it very easily. You see the precision says uh, three decimal places. Uh, let's make it two and upload the code. And now we have this uh, reading 4.97. And here it, it says also show zero false if you want it to make it true. Now all the zeros have been will all the zeros will be displaced uh, displayed on the left side. And here is the transistor driver for one digit. You can do the same thing for multiple digits. And I'm going to use this one, which is a common anode display. This is a PNP transistor or a positive transistor to N3906. And here is the wiring diagram for driving a seven segment display. I've used this 20, uh, 2N2907 or 2N3906 PNP transistor. And as you can see, each base is connected to the segment so each transistor is driving a segment because the this display is common cathode cathode is common it is connected to the ground but the anode is driving from 5 volts so the 5 volt is coming and it's passing through this resistor the signal is turning it on 
one by one like this. And if you need to use two display or more, then we just need one more chip and you can drive up to eight display like that. I'm giving you example for the two. This portion is exactly the same, but instead of common, we have used this trans, uh, chip, which I've explained it before. So you don't need transistors, you just need to connect all the elements. These are in parallel. For example, the first pen is connected to the first pen, second pen is connected to the second, third, fourth, all of them except the common. The base is connected via these one kilo ohm resistor. These are not correct, critical. You can put 10 kilo ohm, 20 kilo ohm, or 33 kilo ohm. Doesn't matter because we are using it as switch. And here, this is a display. And we can use common anode or common cathode. In this case, this is a common cathode. And in the code, we can select different type if we want. If you select the wrong type of display, you see that's, now you see the black, black is the number. I don't know if you can read it. That's seven, one, and then two, and then three. These off points, exactly the same, so you can read it.